Yeah, um, I'm based in Bombay, India. I run a group of companies there uh, called Only Much Louder, which is a group of six different companies. So there's a record label, there's artist management, um, there's a festival company, there's a digital company, there's a publishing company we're starting up. So it works across different regions of the music business, but all of them are independent, separate companies. Um, and we work with non-Bollywood music in India. I started the company about eight years ago. So yeah. I think at this time, in fact, you have to start young because my advantage was A, for the first three to four years, I didn't have to worry so much about bringing in a lot of money. Uh, because you know there are not so many expenses that you have when you're young and uh, you're building your own business. Um, and by that time, I had made all the mistakes I had to, learned a lot from it. And in the last two to three years, we've been able to focus on building a more sustainable business in that sense. Uh, so I think uh, starting young was a big advantage uh, for me. I started at about uh, I start at 17. Yeah. I guess numbers, population. Um, I come from India, of course. India has 1.2 billion people, but I guess every emerging country has a massive population. Uh, second. One thing I've noticed in common in all developing countries is culture roots back really far uh, far back. You know, I, the roots are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years old. So there's so much music, there's so much uh, folk music or any roots music that's present in all these countries, which have not really been out there so far in the open. So I think the big opportunity is using that which has not been uh, exposed outside um, and creating an industry which can really work with grassroots musicians to even uh, contemporary musicians as well. So the people advantage and also the fact that so many multinational companies want to come and work in developing countries now, uh, that's a good uh, thing to leverage on. So try and get sponsorship from these brands and work with them a lot closer. Uh, more people with little money to spend still turns out to a lot of money and that's what the India and China story has been. It's not that everyone in India has really become rich very fast, that's not the case. Or most of them are middle class or below the poverty line as well. Uh, but if you make products, and it's not just music, but if you build something that's that can be consumed by a lot of the people even at the bottom, uh, the numbers add up and it results into something that's uh, substantial. I, I, that's, that's kind of how uh, other sectors have really grown in emerging countries in spite of not having people with so much spending capacity. I, I, I obviously haven't spent much time here so I can't yes. comment on you know how mm -hmm. uh, people react to music but my usual gut feel is that almost everyone their lives revolve around music just that how they consume it is a lot different you know so uh, in India a huge population consumes music by watching Bollywood because Bollywood mu uh, movies mm -hmm. are full of music yeah. uh, so that's one way they do it that doesn't mean that they don't support independent bands just that their way of consuming or listening to music is much different um, and I find it hard to believe that it might not be the center of their lives because uh, especially music being largely free right now uh, for many people and across many continents uh, and access being a lot more I think it's a lot more integrated in people's lives than ever before for sure uh, but yeah I can't comment on you know how it can be changed because uh, I haven't really un uh, don't understand the local population and okay. how it kind of works okay. here really sure uh, um, I think my, um, my the point I was trying to make is a uh, Companies or festivals in America and UK are not looking for rock bands coming from Colombia or India largely, you know, yeah. that happens every once in a while. Or they will look at rock or hip-hop coming but with a local flavor yeah. because that's what is new to their ears because they don't want someone coming and doing American style hip-hop or British style Britpop or uh, 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 indie music. That's not what really it's about. Uh, so I think adding that ethnic or local flavor is very important because that's, that's a selling point. Plus, like I said uh, some time back, I, our culture dates back so far that we have a lot more to offer. Of course, we haven't figured out how to, how to put it together and how to get it really out there. But once that starts happening, I think uh, it really works. And even in smaller countries, no matter how small a country you are in, in Asia or South America, there's just so much culture and tradition and everything imbibed in it. I think that's, that's something that we just need to figure out how to get out. Uh, because it's not been done, it doesn't mean it can't be done. Great. Vijay, thank you very much. All right, thanks, Vijay. Can you say? Can you say? Uh... Hi, this is Vijay, and hello, RavistaArkadia.com.